Chicago's Morning Answer continues next on AM560, The Answer. Now, from the Signature Bank Studios, this is Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan Proft and Amy Jacobson. Insert Democrat Socialist here. Runs the Democratic House law for 30 plus years of running. He's promising this and he's stealing that. Where can you get that kind of money? He's using your house like his own piggy bank. Gang, 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 gang. You ought to know by now. You can pay off your house here in Illinois. But you can never keep up with the taxes. Oh, how it's always been the plan To have a taxpayer pay, no doubt Not a matter of if anymore but when You're moving out I said, when you're moving out Top of the morning, Dan and Amy. The theme music means it's time for our weekly conversation with Ted Dabrowski, president of WirePoints, wirepoints.org, all things Illinois policy related. You know, as I mentioned yesterday, Totally uh, understand uh, Cook County State Attorney Kim Fox being at the uh, Super Bowl to enjoy Usher and the game and everything because she's basically got this office, the Cook County State Attorney's office back home on autopilot. It's 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 humming right along. So she doesn't need to be here all the time. Well, she doesn't. I mean, since COVID, she doesn't go into the office hardly ever. They need two or three times a week. And that that has not changed for her. But she's on her way out. Maybe she got the tickets. You know, for the Super Bowl through Jesse Smollett. She well, has a relationship again. with him, and he's friends with Usher, so that now she's on the field. I mean, look at that. Well, again, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, with the, I'm sure Clayton Harris will be a continuation of the same oh, yeah. uh, upon his election right, uh, he next wants, month. He wants her endorsement. Uh, Keon Thomas. Uh, Keon Thomas is a uh, Chicago high school student. He was on pretrial release for several juvenile cases, including aggravated carjacking and gun possession. Of course. Those aren't violent crimes. Right, Governor Pritzker? Uh, Well, while he was on pretrial release, the 17-year-old shot and killed a classmate in an Inglewood gas station. Uh, Mm. So now he's detained pending trial. Now he's detained. Uh, He's the 33rd person last year, 2023, because that's when this occurred. Charged with murder or attempted murder or trying to shoot someone while on felony pretrial release. Uh, again, 33 that represent uh, 17 murders, uh, two attempted murders of a police, 16 attempted murders, three aggravated battery with a firearm, seven aggravated reckless discharge of a firearm. Uh, total victims, 49. Hmm. Preventable crimes. You kind of keep telling yourself that's what those are. Not preventable under Prisco's Purge Law. Nope. Mm. Uh, number two, this year, let's uh, fast forward into 2024. Let's catch up. Okay. Tow truck driver opened fire on two competitors over a job, only to learn that the competitors were armed concealed carry license holders. They have uh, prosecutors now charged the man with two counts of attempted murder. The 33 year old is recovering from gunshot wounds he received during the altercation. Uh, He was on felony pretrial release at the time of the allegations, making him the second person charged in 2024 with murder, attempted murder, or trying to shoot someone while on felony pretrial release. Number two. There'll be more. You can count on it. For uh, more on uh, this topic, because I heard on Mike Scott's newscast, a lot of carrying on about uh, from BLM brand about what he's doing to uh, increase the peace on the streets, the usual bilge that we've become accustomed to. Ted Dabrowski joins us, PresidentWirePoints.org. Ted, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Good morning, Dan. Welcome back, Amy. Uh, looking forward, WGN apparently got a note from a listener. WGN tonight is doing a little uh, stop, look, and listen on the impact of the Pritzker Purge Law to this point that's going to be really interesting as uh, our alert listener pointed out i remember and he reminded me that wgn was one of the stations that wouldn't run my pritzker purge law television ad the uh, lakeview oh, right, the attack all these stations that are now going to do a little assessment of the impact and we know some of the impact based on the stories that we were just uh sharing but now all of a sudden it's okay to talk about the mayhem 
on the streets of Chicago. Yeah, it's okay uh, to talk about it, uh, more attention to it, but, uh, you know, let's let's see what they do on their analysis. Uh, they probably won't embrace how big the problem really is, and I think, you know, just covering this Keon Thomas that you mentioned, that's just a great example. You know, you've got a kid, aggravated carjacking, that means he had a weapon of some kind, gun possession, right? He, he gets out back on the streets, a young kid, sadly, 17-year-old, and then he turns around and shoots a classmate and kills him. Um, this is, I think, the tip. I don't want to say the typical story, but it's a story that's played out over and over again. And thanks to CWB for for bringing these things to life. Um, you know, as we saw the other day, in, in what we reported, the, the jail populations are down. The electronic monitoring is down. So, I, I, you know, what, what can you say? It's 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 obvious what's happening. Um, everybody knows it. The media knows it. Let's see what they report on. But they they have to continue to hide this stuff in some way i mean they're not they're obviously reporting on it some and it's better than than what happens in reporting at the state level but uh uh it, it's out there happening and, and people know it people are living it and yet um we're still playing this game well i mean is there any any chance that something might change when the march primaries come i mean kim fox is not running but is there i mean i know bob fioretti he's a perennial candidate but He's well, that's a, only... he's a general election. He's a Republican. I'm sorry, he's a yeah. Republican. Right, I'm sorry. But in the primary, you know, you've got uh, Clayton Harris, I believe is his name. And Clayton he... Harris and yeah. Burke. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He wants... He, yeah. 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 Wants well, you know, just I, I listened to some of the debate they had the other day, and it was, it was kind of nice to hear. And again, I, I haven't followed her closely enough, but uh, Eileen Burke, um, she, um, she said that what she wants to do is detain, 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 detain for murder, detain for, you know, gun possessions. She, she was sounded pretty strong on it. But, of course, Clayton Harris is the one that has the, the backing of Preckwinkle. Uh, I would imagine that if that's true. If, if, if he has the backing of Preckwinkle, which he does, then that means he's going to be more status quo and, and um, you know, toe the line, uh, especially on, on, you know, the whole social justice. So uh, probably no changes. And uh, I think we just expect the same until people revolt in some way, but uh, we don't have that yet. No, we sure don't. And um, Eileen Burke, I mean, I don't know much about her, but she obviously sees a market position uh, in that primary, but I don't trust her either. I mean, she's she's slated by the same people. She's backed by some of the same people that have been all over the place in terms of supporting these awful policymakers. So, I mean, the you know, don't place too much uh, hope right. in Eileen Burke, who's a product of the machine, being some sort of uh, change agent when it comes to this. Uh, you know, I mean, it's just it's just more of the same because, as you say, there's no I mean, what, what's even the attention? How many how, I, I'd love to, to see what the name idea of those two candidates is right now. Well, how much attention Cook County residents are actually paying and Chicago residents are actually paying to this Cook County state's attorney's race? It is de minimis. Um, yeah, I would Dan, suspect. I would... Yeah, I, I totally agree. I, you know, as I as I go around and I talk to people, nobody has any clue about this this race. Of course, why would uh, they? They won't know the difference between the two. Uh, yeah, and it should be it's the most consequential race. You know, we wrote about this uh, you know three months ago. I think it was trying to see whether people get inspired by it, and uh, they don't. So, despite the crime, despite the problems, uh, people don't really understand how important this role is. Uh, but they know. But they know uh, Kim Fox. They. Up. They know in suburban Cook County, oh, Kim, or at least some of the suburban Cook County north and northwest, oh, Kim Fox is terrible, and Kim Fox is this, and Jesse Smollett this, and Jesse Smollett that, and, and the, the releasing of violent crime. Yeah, you know all that. You probably don't even know she's out the door. You have no idea who the replacements are. You paid no attention. And then you're going to decry the lawlessness on the streets of Chicagoland some more. Uh, it's just it's just so frustrating. I, I'm just you know, uh, uh, it's just it's it's, it's 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 without point is what it is. Yeah, it is. It's, it's a little bit uh, reminding of uh, just a few a, a year ago when uh, Lightfoot was this, Lightfoot was that, Lightfoot was that, and what did we get in in, in, in her Absolutely. place? Absolutely, oh, we got Johnson. worse. So. Absolutely. Makes me miss life. But here's Harris, though. Here's Harris trying to, you know, get the vote. I am the balance, the bridge, the evolution of what has been going on. And we're going to move forward to ensure that our communities feel safe and that we're um, uh, experiencing and doing or being safe through justice. Do you want Kim Fox's endorsement? I would absolutely appreciate Kim Fox's <laughs> endorse- endorsement. Well, so, yeah, yeah, she right. did such a great job. Yeah. Well, whatever. I mean, the endorsement needs, needs nothing. Oh, I uh, we're going to be you know, create safety through justice. He's you know spouting all of the non sequitur silliness and stupid bromides. 
He'll be fine. He'll be an adequate replacement. Let's continue the way things are, of course. Protect the status quo. Um, You know, protect protect the inside. The appearance of change on the outside to protect the people on the inside. That's the play. It always has been. It always will be. Um, because that's what people want. So they'll get it. Uh, this study that you did is going over to CPS, which is uh, uh, an incubator for all sorts of uh, pathological and, and, uh, 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 and, and, and destructive behavior. Um, this, this analysis you find about uh, reading and math proficiency levels, give us an update as if we're going to yeah, be surprised. So we- Right. Well, so we did this report last year where, where we found after looking at all that data, we, you know, we looked at kids that can't read, kids that can't do math. Uh, last year, we found a whole bunch of schools in Illinois where not a single kid who was tested um, could do math. And, and there was uh, like 60 schools, 30 schools where they couldn't read at grade level. And uh, so last week, I think it was, suddenly that old report got a lot of attention. Yeah, Elon Musk had uh, engaged with it. Uh, Ramaswamy engaged with it. Uh, Jordan Peterson uh, engaged with it. So it was running around. So we said, well, let's do the update. Um, and uh, and we did that. So now we found that there's 67 Illinois schools where not a single child tested proficient in math. And in uh, in reading, it was 32 schools where not a single kid tested proficient in reading. So, um, you know, this is this is fascinating for, for a lot of reasons. And, and something we added to, to this analysis this year is that Despite the fact that no kids can, can, can read or do math, graduation rates on average in these schools was 70%. Of course. So in other words, this kind oh, of proves instant. the point we've been making. It doesn't matter if they can read. It doesn't matter if they can do math. Just get them to the system. You know, many of these schools are spending twenty five and thirty and 35000 per kid. It's, again, I'm just repeating myself here. It's, it's just a system that's only made for, you know, for it's a work program. They just take care of the kids a little bit and then push them out. Well, what and about I suspect, holding the teachers accountable for pushing them through? I mean, what I, do you mean? I, 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 I huh? suspect the teachers' uh, proficiency rating or the teachers' uh, grades are in the ninety eighth or ninety ninth percentile, right? Everything's fine with the teachers. Yeah, you know, they, 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 the whole. This is this is why it's so broken. Um, but yeah, the teachers will get. And, and a lot of these schools are called commendable, which is uh, you know deserving praise is, is what it means. It's the second highest rating, so it's the same stuff. It's just another cut at at how extreme it gets and and how. Um, you know, they can they can get away with it and nobody cares. You know, if we didn't report this stuff, I don't know how we would know it. And, and we, we only got lucky because we were kind of searching for stuff. And, and there it was. We're not supposed to pay attention to that. We're supposed to pay attention to this. Uh, um, Mayor Brenda Johnson has sent Illinois Senate President Donna Harmon. I'm doing my best, you know, newsreader, mindless, mouth breathing, idiot newsreader on any of the network affiliates in Chicago. Uh, we gave her man Brenda Johnson and Illinois State President Donna Harmon a letter urging him to support the election of only 10 of the 21 school board seats this November. That's the mayor's plan. Ted Dabrowski, 10 of 21 should be elected, so he'll elect 10 and he'll appoint the other 11. What say you? Well, you know, so the, so the big news was back in, in Lightfoot's days that they wanted to get the uh, school board members, have 21 school board members elected by the people. Uh, but things changed when by Brandon Johnson got control of the CTU, of the mayor, by the mayor, got mayorship, because suddenly, you know, the CTU has control of the board now by, by the virtue of having Brandon Johnson picking uh, board members. So now suddenly they don't want to do the races they're going to end up i think probably doing uh 10 of the 21 to to be elected by the people uh but um pardon my peter pardon my peter griffin but who the hell cares if they're elected or appointed it matters not nothing yeah it won't it won't make a difference it'll be the same you know what kind of show so it it doesn't really matter and and the unions will control the votes anyway so yeah Right, but th- but but this is what we're going to talk about. Oh, uh, ten versus twenty-one, and there's a big row, and you're going to the 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 debate will be you know between one phony good government good government group. David Greasing will come in from BGH and say, "Hey, wait a second, there should be all of them elected." Oh, it's, uh, we'll, uh, we'll have this stupid conversation for stupid people that continue to make stupid decisions because they don't have enough self-respect to pay any attention, to connect any dots, to think for themselves. That's the that's the sum total of it as far as I'm concerned. I mean, the, the adults in the system, in Cook County, and I'm talking about in the suburbs, I mean, they are 
uh, just as guilty as the Chicago Teachers Union for what's happening at those schools, for what's happening these these phony debates. They're just they're as bad as the least capable, competent teacher or even grade school student in CPS. They're all children. The entirety of Cook County is nothing but children, except people who listen to this show, of course. Uh, Ted Dabrowski, president of WirePoints, WirePoints.org. Thanks for uh, joining us as always, Ted. Appreciate it. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Amy. Thank you. And he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. The more you listen, the more you listen, the more you'll know. This is Chicago's morning answer. Morning answer on AM 560. The answer. Rick Boric, host of Unleash Your Wealth. When the stock market struggles, when inflation is high, you need to start looking through the inventory of all your accounts and say, is every one of these investments working as hard as it could be? 